All right, now we welcome in our guy, Dave Wanstead, down in Florida, paying attention to all things in Chicago. Dave, it's Friday night. It's great to talk football with you. How's, how's your week been? It's been a great week, absolutely. Uh, never a dull moment uh, here in Naples at the house, putting it back together, or in the NFL, you know, <laughs> with free, free agency and uh, transition and franchise caps and players getting cut and Justin Fields, not talking to the, or following the media, uh, gotta love it. I mean, it's you would think this would be the off season; it would be a slow time, but it's not. Then obviously the combine getting going here next week, so that'll be a big deal next week. NFL never sleeps, and we keep looking for clues, Dave. So this week there was a bit of silliness with the Instagram flap, but also you know you don't know what to take seriously or not. We heard from Shane Waldron as well. Did we learn anything this week? about what direction that we feel like the Bears might be headed? Well, you know, nothing from Shane. You know, he didn't say anything either way with, about it, any quarterbacks. All he talked about was how well the quarterbacks played down the stretch <laughs> leading up to the championship game in college. Maybe the Bears are going to draft J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. You know, that's about what I took out of that. But uh, uh, in all seriousness, uh, and you never know, I guess, but Justin Fields, what I took from his – the podcast that he was doing there, and when he, it, it took, I, I took the way that Justin does not know. He doesn't have a commitment. If the Bears told him, you're going to be back, you're our guy, he would have said, hey, everybody relax. It, everything's good in Chicago. But he, you know, used the words, I'd like to be back. I like, I mean, you know, so he, he's up in the air right now. He talked about getting it over with as fast as possible. Uh, I, I really like Justin. You know that. I've been a fan of his. I think all the intangibles are A+. plus. We know what he's, his limitations are, I think, on the football field. But, boy, the intangibles are A+. Plus, and I think he sh had an opportunity, and he showed that again. He, he represents himself very well. So, Dave, Thursday at Hallis Hall, Shane Waldron, as you mentioned, had a chance, his first chance, to address the Bears media. Eric Washington, the defensive coordinator, also had an opportunity to kind of state – where he's coming from and what he wants to do. I loved when he talked about the pass rush. That was really good stuff because he has a history of being able to develop a pass rush. Shane Waldron didn't get specifics about, about anything, really, but I like the way that he presented himself. He was enthusiastic. He's got history and experience on the job. Dave, I don't think we were looking for a lot of substance at this stage of their tenures. We did get a lot of style. Both guys can command a room. Yeah, they, they can, and... Um... You know, I, I think that Shane, the biggest thing with Shane, and, and I really don't know him that I liked. I mean, I, I had a relationship with Luke Getze. <clears throat> you know, there, there was a reason that Luke Getze, you know, had two or three options to be a coordinator just like that. And it was because of he ran, he knows how to run the football, uh, I think. And, uh, you know, everybody is, is assuming that this is going to be a big transition from a run game to a big passing game. I don't think it's going to be with the Bears because – you look at Shane Walter, his background. Bill Belichick is run and play defense. Uh, he's had time with him. He's had time with Pete Carroll, who's a defensive coach. Pete wants to run the ball and play defense. So I think that uh, he understands the importance of the running game. Now, whether he believes in it, we're going to all find out. But he's been around some, some excellent head coaches, obviously, uh, with a background of running the football. So I think the Bears are going to be – it's going to be new, but it's going to be balanced. I, 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 I think that's that's what I took away from that. And and the new defense coordinator, Washington. You know, I don't know much about him. Uh, you know, he talked about rushing the passer. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm the defensive coordinator, I don't. That wouldn't be a top subject that I'd be talking about rushing a passer. Uh, you know, you got defensive line coaches on the staff that I'm sure are saying, "Wow, I thought we were doing a pretty good job." So I, <laughs> I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't really. Uh, excited about that comment to be very honest with you you know if he's going to be a coordinator he's got to get the big picture and understand what Flus really wants to do on defense front, front wise coverage wise blitz wise that's what the defensive coordinator's focus needs to be on not working about really worrying about you know rushing the passer and swim techniques and all that stuff even though that's all part of it. I'm not slighting it at all. Sure. But I'm just saying, if you're going to be a coordinator, where's your priorities? Let's go back to the offense, Dave, because Chris Morgan, the offensive line coach, got a promotion 
all the rest of the offensive coaches were purged and fired. Chris Morgan stays and gets promoted to the run game coordinator. To me, I think that indicates how much of what you just described is going to come to the forefront. The Bears want to be a run first football team, regardless of who the quarterback is. That's a good thing if it's a rookie because it takes some of the pressure off that guy. Also, if it's Justin Fields, it would be more the same. What was your interpretation of Chris Morgan getting the promotion? I, I love it. I'm a big fan of Chris Morgan. You know, he comes out of that school. Uh, he was, I think, in high school. He might have been a, when we were at the Dallas Cowboys. He would come by and watch Tony Wise. And he comes from the. Him and I had good conversations. He's a big fan of Chris Versers, who's tied in. Harry Heastead. They're all kind of out of that little clone of guys, uh, with Tony kind of being the godfather. So he's a good coach. I've watched him practice. I followed him around a couple of times. And there's no wasted time on the field. There's not a lot of talking. He's a tough offensive line coach. He will block you. I think we look at our offensive line, and they truly, whether it's Jenkins or whether it's Wright, all those guys, I think they all got better, you know, as particularly the young guys as the year went on. So I'm excited. That's, that's a great move by, by Flus uh, to, to promote him and keep him and give him more responsibility. Dave, I wanted to ask you about this. We've talked about it on the Mullen Haw Show during your Tuesday appearances. It looks like Caleb Williams will not hire an agent. The NFLPA released this list of certified agents representing players in the draft. He wasn't on that list. You have said that once he got maybe some professional advice and an agent around him, he would clean some things up before the draft. Is this good or bad news, or is it no news at all? Because I think that it did raise a few eyebrows. Well, let me just tell you this. You know, I was involved with having the number one pick twice at Dallas. Once we took Troy Aikman and once we took Russell Maryland. And both times uh, we had uh, we had talks with the agent, uh, the parameters of the contract. With Russell, the co contract was basically done if we took him. Uh, with Troy, it was a little bit of work in progress. But... Uh, but Jimmy Johnson, I remember him and Jerry Jones talking, and they both said if we take this player with the first pick, we both agree that we feel very, very good about his agent and about being able to get him under a contract and get him in here ASAP and start working. That's what concerns me about the Caleb Williams thing. Uh, you're going to take this guy the first pick in a draft, and it's his dad is going to represent him, or who's going to represent him? I don't know. But it would concern me 100%. Uh, I need to have more information. Who's going to be, you know, talking to this kid about signing the papers? And it's, it's going to be time to play football very, very soon. 30 seconds left, Dave. Would it be enough to keep a team like the Bears away from drafting somebody who doesn't have representation or concerns about what that might imply moving forward? Well, from my experience, it would. Everyone's going to think them probably crazy and say heck no he's too good a player okay if he is then draft him my experience tells me there was a lot of players not just the first pick in a draft if we had a major problem with the agent and we didn't think that we could get this kid signed and it was going to be a constant uh problem there was enough other good players equally as good in our minds that we moved on to the next guy so i think it is meaningful maybe more so today than ever before, truly, uh, who you're going to be dealing with. Because you don't deal with the kid. You're going to be dealing with the agent. Love your insight, Dave. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Okay, David, you too. Congrats. You finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.